What, what works for me are yoga, meditation, sex, orgasm, working out. Those tend to be the most effective. It kind of brings up another topic where you're all very busy, accomplished women, and we would love to hear about what your own kind of personal strategies are to mitigate stress in your own in your own lives. So maybe I'll start with you, Julia. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Stress is something that I wish I kind of was a little bit more aware of when I was younger. Partially in ways that some of us experience. Uh, for instance, being in academia and graduate school and doing a postdoc and many, many, however many long, hour-long days. Um, and then also um, the issue of stress, uh, it's very well established, um, the model of minority stress, mm -hmm. that um, just living in a world, if you're part of a group, that you always either are, are feel on the defensive or always trying to navigate around other people. Um, that some of that gets internalized, that can create a lot of stress. Um, so yeah, that's been something that I've found myself uh, personally working on. I have tried meditation and that's something that I personally find difficult to turn the sounds off in my brain. And I know other people um, th that I know like find it really important for them. Um, one thing that I really do try to make a point of, with exceptions of like, if, if I have an immediate deadline, an important deadline, or if I am flying across the country, for instance, uh, I really make a point to try to get a full, you know, eight hours of sleep every night um, to give myself that space. And I also give myself space at the end of the day where I kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. I can relax now. And maybe that's in the middle of the day. Maybe in the middle of the day I'm going for a walk and maybe I am doing a little bit of work at night. But just giving myself space every day so that um, I can not have that weight and that stress on me. Yeah, all of those are really great points. And it, it made me think of my daughter, actually, who she, um, she's always rocked to self-soothe. And we've noticed that it, like, it bothers other people, right? Um, it bothers the people around her, but she, it doesn't bother her. And in fact, it is a coping strategy for her to deal with a stressful situation or when she's tired. And I have watched her learn to almost constrict that and hide that. And I've watched the energy that it takes for her to try not to rock around other people just because it makes them uncomfortable. And it bums me out, honestly. Like, it totally bums me out. And I had a conversation with her and I said, okay, well, if it's bothering the driver of a car, then maybe, okay, let's, you can spend the energy then. But if you're at school and it's really harming nobody, then why do you have to spend all of that en extra energy to suppress something that is going to calm you down so you can perform and be comfortable and in a way that's at your own best? And... So she's actually learning to have those conversations. And obviously that is a tiny example that can be expanded to so many other things beyond, you know, rocking to self-soothe. Um, so I think that's great. I love that you give yourself eight. I think Matthew Walker says this too. He says, I give myself eight hours to try and get my sleep. If I don't get it in there, I try not to stress out too much. But um, I personally love meditation, but I would actually argue that meditation for me is noticing the absolute frenetic <laughs> mess that is my brain and actually trying to parse out what it is. Just try, you know, just try and watch it and notice it. But I would say I'm not necessarily calmer after I meditate at all. That doesn't, that's, that's not an impact. But how about you? <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think, you know, you make a good point, which is to say that everybody deals with stress in different ways. Mindfulness training has been something that I prescribe to my patients after heart attacks, for example, but it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. And I would say for me, um, just having a really strong support system, my family, my husband, um, uh, my colleagues at work, my friends, like really help to ground me. Um, there's always stressors, you know, there's been so much discussion in the healthcare field now about um, burnout. I think that that's a really, uh, a really big issue that we're seeing all the time, particularly in you know in the uh, wake of the COVID pandemic. And um, and so I think you know I think it's important to give one space to 
to have you know have time for oneself. Um, but for me, it really has been having the connections with um, the people who are really who really care about you, independent of your professional accomplishments and things like that. Yeah, that's great. And I, I feel like there's finally more recognition about the need for social support and that network as a component of your health. It's not just your endurance training and you know, your resistance training, but also did you make sure that you like made con eye contact with somebody that you love and who loves you today, like, or the cat or like whatever it is, like, but something that brings you some joy. So yeah, we'd love to hear about what you do. I love crafting a a la carte menu for my patients of things that really help them with navigating stress. Because stress is inevitable. And um, you know what what works for me are yoga, meditation, sex, orgasm, working out. Those tend to be the most effective. Although one of the things I've realized, especially in the past 10 years, is the role of trauma and stress and how trauma is often at the root of our stress response, especially a more dysregulated stress response. And so we're, we're in this era of more trauma-informed treatment, trauma-informed therapy, psychedelic medicine, and I think those are really interesting areas, especially when you look at the effect, for instance, from the phase three randomized trials looking at MDMA mm -hmm. for post-traumatic stress disorder, it has durable effects like somewhere around two thirds to 80% of people no longer meet criteria for PTSD. So lots of new treatments on the horizon. I would say these healing states of consciousness that you can get into with yoga, meditation, psychedelics, orgasm, those are really beneficial for us with regard to stress response. All makes sense. I'm also very excited about some of the psychedelic therapies that are definitely getting more attention now. Um, awesome, how about you? So I have thought a lot about stress and from my perspective, really reframing what stress is in terms of, um, you know, it is an opportunity to make us more resilient. So there's this kind of pervasive discussion about how stress is bad. And I do think that there are certain stressors, death, divorce, health, you know, issue, that's some serious stress. But everything else, you know, we are designed to be resilient. We are designed, you know, to me, you know, it's not about getting in a warm bubble bath after a, a quote, hard day. It's, was this day really hard or not? Because the chances are it wasn't really that hard. It was our perception or the way that we're, you know, like our voice micromanaging, whatever it is, it's not a hard day. You know, going to war is hard. Getting divorced, you know, having a death in the family, these things, those are hard. So really reframing, number one, and understanding that stress is not bad, mm -hmm. that it allows us to become better, that there are other stress responses above and beyond fight or flight, uh, you know, I think Stanford, I think her name was uh, Kelly, Dr. Kelly McGonigal, talked a lot about tend and befriend and the courage response. There are these other ways. So for me, the first thing that I do is, is ask myself, is, is this true? Am I really stressed? Mm -hmm. Is this thing stressful? Mm -hmm. Most likely it's not. Yep. And then if that doesn't work, I always recognize that everything in life has seasons, that you know, this could potentially be a season. So intellectualizing it. And then if that doesn't work, a really good high intensity training interval will work. You know, the kind where you're just completely laid out because you legitimately cannot do anything else. You can't think about it. There's nothing else you can do. You're probably gonna go puke in a can and that's it. And you would be shocked at how much better your mindset is after that. Definitely agree. Um, I used to go rock climbing because I would be afraid of falling. And so I couldn't really think about anything else when I was trying to not fall. See, that's, <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> no, it was absolutely mind distracting. And um, honestly, I, honestly I, I often ask myself the question, would I care about this on my deathbed, yes or no? if I'm really just in a, in a spiral.